Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Shashi, Mr. Rob, Mr. Patak, and dignitaries on the stage. It is again a great privilege again to be around amongst you to just address uh, on the 5G mission. As we all know that we have started this 5G uh, journey some time back. Today we are claiming around 100 million users in 5G. Uh, the, the figure seems to be really, really attractive. We started uh, initially, we were one among, among the top five countries today to have a real 5G rollout of 100 million. We are next only to two other countries. Of course, the top leading bear around 300 million. Uh, but we, are, uh, we will be there maybe in the next couple of years. The rollout is very faster. We have been developing it and the economy, all the economy that is associated with 5G is also seeing a sea change that is happening. And that is going to, and we expect, I think by 2023 to 2030, the economy itself may be around 400 billion. That's what we think uh, will be the amount of thing. But again, all said and done, the government has, done a, has taken a lot of steps in encouraging 5G. We wanted to see rollout of this 5G at the earliest across the country, and we had been talking a lot of, not only on the 5G stuff, because one, the rollout of 5G and its utilization in the market will not be successful and only if the use cases are not there. What are the different use cases that is required? So we, we brought out aggressively promoting a number of startups who are into the 5G use cases. We, I think, the, over the last two, three years, we have promoted around 100 different startups. At least 39 of them are really, in, in, what do you say, enterprise grade. We have reached a stage of enterprise grade type of real 5G use cases being deployed, used in various activities like maybe the agriculture, or maybe the health sector, the financial sector. Of course, one of the startups doing exceedingly well in the finance sector, which will bring out a real revolution, what we call as an ATM on a mobile van or some, some sort of a thought, not similar to the ambulances on the 5G we have in the, uh, um, the, the 5G rollout sector. We are, we are talking about hamper ports, et cetera. So you see, the 5G is almost entering into different, different areas. and we have. Not on one side we are done, we are also encouraging manufacturing also. So manufacturing to some extent can we have our own Indian Indianized project products. So we even product uh, promoting 5G RAN equipment, 5G code. We are we are today we are proud to say that we have Indian uh, Indian vendors who are able to make up this. Of course we can. I was just seeing some of what uh, Rao was explaining. With so there's the there is no death of it because. The talent and the actual happening has happened. What, what the world was doing maybe for 30, 40 years, if you take the Ericsson's and the Nokia's, they've been developing this for, for maybe decades. The last one decade, we call it the decade of innovation. The decade of innovation really rolled out into the, in the country. And that we can see, the signs of it available, the signs available, everything. Today you name any, any, any particular sector, we have different product line. That product line is world class. That's where we have been. And we are also exploring another more than 200 odd different proposals also, uh, continuously encouraging. Going specifically in the 5G, I think this forum I wanted to stress two, three very critical things which we need to understand. On the basic of 5G, the, where the 5G's utility is go, going to go on. See, even, even, in the, so even we call it the voice, I was, I, as I was also mentioning, if, uh, I think maybe a few months back, in one of the seminars, the, the transition of the voice call itself is going to take a different leap. So what we call the so-called 2G calls, that is what the voice call we have, will go into so what we call as 3G calls, holographic communication type, where real 3G calls will happen. That, the base of which is, for the technically thing, if you know that, even a, a growth of this VOLT to what we have, the VONR. So that means the control of your voice starts from your not only your core, your RAN, your switch, everything till the edge computing. That's how the one great area is happening. And a lot of standardization is happening today. So maybe by 2026, we have most of the uh, products line in place, actually. One other very growth area where we look at is small captive networks of the or is it the non-public networks? That's also growing in a very big way, mining in the small ways, etc. What is the effect? There we are going to something called sensing communication networks. That is going to be the st stepping stone for what we have in the 6G, the sensor network. As we all know, the 6G is going to be a completely a sensor network driven thing. To drive that, 
This network sensing system, that is also is another very important. That needs to have a smaller scale that is happening in what you call the captive public network. And if you, if you closely uh, see, the 5G was actually stretched on the five key domains. One was the smart mobility, how the mobility between, how the transition of the mobility is faster, the energy, the health, the consumer, and industry IoT. So each of these sectors, unless we grow, this is all needs to add to the value. This value will add to the, the global value of the economic change. That's how the economic change is gone. Today, just if we, if we can sit back and say, now after the 5G rollout, now we have even started talking about 6G research going on in various aspects. As we were told about, uh, we are talking about immersive education. Immersive holographic communication and stuff like that. When that's going to happen, even QZ, the quantum assisted computing networks, communication networks. When, when we are going at this, when you sit back and see, are these five domains, because these are going to be the pillar of the domains. Where are we in India? Have we put our domain in picture for these five? It's really required to be noted. Of course, other than the industrial IoT, IoT is a huge sphere where we can talk from etc. Because the, one of the key things which drove on the base of the 5G was the IoTs. We started by narrowband IoT and then we, IoTs and that's going to go in a very big way when we talk about 6G because we are talking about billion devices connected. Today we have around close to a billion, more than a billion devices, con devices connected in the country itself. Going back when, before it was in Tamil Nadu state, what we, we were even planning to have sensors put in, suppose any district, we wanted to develop as a smart district. We used to roll out sensors across, maybe the farming land, the PHCs, the, uh, maybe, maybe what, whatever institution, wherever the con consumer interface is happening, we, have, we were trying to put some sort of a sensor devices where we can get immediate feedback to the district administration. So NIT is, industrial IoT is really a massive, massive application coming on, which we are still not fully exploited in 5G. The, as I told you, the NR is another one. That is also one of the clear, clean area that needs to be really introduced. Another very critical, important aspect of the 5G was the MEC, the mobile edge computing. Now, again, this is also a growth factor to 6G. Now, most of the, when, when your IoT and all the data is happening at the ground, a lot of data starts generating at the edge. Now, for all the data to come to a common place and then do the assimilation is going to take time and connectivity problems. So, these sort of mobile edge computing devices, which does local computing, and based on it, what? You have AI built in, different AI models built in, etc. All that is also happening. So, that is another area which we need to really look at. Apart from this domain, there are clear four distinct areas which also we need to talk about. One, we know that suppose in a very concentrated area, maybe a smart building, a smart area, where you can put a lot of devices and have smartness built into it. Even uh, the transfer rates of up to 1G, that is one distinct area where 5G is. Another area is you have a remote, where it's something like farming, you have an area is large, but again you need to have some sort of uh, IoT devices controlling it. Speeds may be down to 500 hem. So again, that is what we call the remote type of activity. The third important type is the latency. Critical applications, of course, uh, for 6G to come down a real XRV or a real autonomous driving, the stepping tone today is again going to be on 5G's critical thing on the latency. And then the massive scale, what we have, the massive scale of deployment. These four domains, distinct types, is still a long, long way to go. So when one, one way we have our networks rolled out and they are coming up, on the other way, the government is investing a lot of money in startups to build their own thing. But how many of the states today, how the, actually how, how many of the actual use cases have gone to the public for its utilization is a, is a real case which needs to be pondered upon. Next very important thing, there are three, four important technological areas that are growing. One technology area is your blockchain. Now, blockchain earlier was used to be as some sort of a distributed system only on a closed loop. But today, we are even talking about the blockchain in the core and the edges. That is going to be the stepping stone for your 6G networks. Can we not doing, start doing it right now? That is also one area which people like should start thinking about when we have the mission, the vision clearly defined. The next important thing with the 5G, which still has not taken a much 
A big way is your EMF. That is your network function virtualization. Because when you have a lot of IoT, with the same devices are available, can we do virtualization in it and bring it together? That's also another area which is really required to be uh, developed. And all this will put down together what we can call a edge-enabled 5G framework. We draw the framework. And I think at the end of the day, probably sessions like this and conference like this should enable us to draw this edge framework, 5G framework, and tick ourselves how many of this framework are we are in. What are the growth areas? Because the investment is there at one end, unless the returns is going to happen. Because the, the 5G was actually projected on the front that it is going to be revenue generation for the operators. How far we are gone to that? These are important steps, a thought-provoking thing which we, we need to really think through if uh, 5G is going to happen. Because we are not only uh, 5G, because as we have seen, the 5G took complete leap change on what happened in the other generations. And 6G is going to go one step ahead. So we have to keep growing as well as seeing that what has been utilized by these service providers rolled out network is also effectively utilized. And from the government side, I'm very sure, you're very sure you might be seeing how we are, we are coming out different policies. We are enabling policies. We have recently started rolling out 500, around 100 5G use case labs across the country. These use case labs are places where people can go and test if the product they have, they can build your, your real environment. Even we have put sensors there so that critical science also could be here. This use case labs could be slowly expanded to into what we call ecosystem labs, where suppose you have a use case on a live example. I was just uh, talking to Rao recently. Can we not take some of the villages, one of the villages, a model village? Instead of from the 5G use case lab environment, can I go into an ecosystem? Put real-time environment and see how the utility reaches the public. Unless seeing is believing. So unless we start building these blocks step by step, we are going to have a, a long way. Because by the time the next three, four years, we have the new other 6G coming and we should be ready with our plane for moving towards new technologies. I'm sure the conferences like this will help in at least sit and think back what are the course corrections if required to be made. The government is very enabled. We, we come out with money is not a problem. We start funding a lot of funds in research. Any, any, any of the activities, we are also willing more than ever happy to explore options available to see decisions. With these few words, I, I wish this conference a very grand success. And then it's the right time we need to start thinking about the utilization, how this is going to happen in the environment.